using the victim for ransom or reward, shield or hostage, accomplishing the aid of the commission of a felony or flight therefrom, inflicting physical injury upon them, violating them sexually, terrorizing him or her, a third person, or interfering with the performance of any government or political function. Um, that is a necessary component of kidnapping the first degree. Anything the state want to say in response to that? <coughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, if we want to get, get further into the evidence, Judge, the state would just ask to call Detective Lips and ask a couple questions. Sure. <coughs> Right, detective, it was asked about where you located Ms. Blanchard's car. Um, was there any evidence of value in her vehicle? Yes. All right, and was there evidence of injury in that vehicle? Yes. What was the evidence of that? Uh, we located uh, blood evidence that was discovered in the passenger compartment of the vehicle, and it was uh, indicative of someone suffering a life-threatening injury. All right, and was that blood evidence tested? It was. And whose blood was it determined to be? Uh, according to the Alabama Department of Forensic Science, that was a Nia Blanchard. Uh, Blanchard. And that was done through DNA evidence? Correct. That's all, Judge. Is there anything in the car linking it to Mr. E.C.? At this point, no. There are still several items that are pending uh, for testing from the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences. Any other argument? The judge was making our previous argument. Um, the state to make the case for <coughs> kidnapping first has to be dismissed. No, I would just say that part of that for kidnapping first, we want the elements is inflicted. <coughs> and I think the uh, testimony to the life threatening uh, amount of blood, I guess, would lead them to believe the life threatening injury would satisfy that element. The court agrees. The court finds probable cause to charge the defendant with kidnapping in the first degree. And the case will be bound over for consideration by an upcoming Lee County Grand Jury. Mm -hmm. To your motion. Which one do you want to do first, Judge? <laughs> Bond, be fine. Okay. Um, judge, the, the primary impetus for our motion regarding the bond uh, is that the, the state's initial motion, uh, I guess our, ours can be sort of considered a response to their initial motion, even though the court has already ruled on it. Um, that the, the state has not made a showing uh, of any evidence, um, any of the allegations in their, in their bond motion. And we ask that they be required to do that, uh, particularly in regards to any kind of history of violent criminal offenses. Um, Mr. Yazid's got no convictions for prior violent criminal charges. Uh, he's got a prior possession of controlled substance and a prior marijuana charge, both of which he received probation for. Um, he does, however, have six prior no-build cases uh, where the state failed to produce enough evidence uh, to indict him. Uh, he spent three years in jail for stuff that he was never convicted of uh, and that he didn't do. Uh, we're seriously concerned that the same thing is happening again in this case. Uh, he's being charged with a serious offense again. <coughs> um, and, and we're concerned that he's going to spend another year or so in jail pending charges, waiting for this thing to go to the grand jury. Um, and, and judge, we would ask for the scheduled bond amount. Um, there is a bond schedule set by the, the court. Um, we would just ask that your honor ad adhere to that schedule. Um, we understand that he was on bond for another offense previous to this. If the court makes that the sole basis of its ruling, we understand that, um, but if not, then we would ask for a hearing on all of the other issues in the state's motion. Mr. Yazid has, by my count, 26 prior arrests, several A felonies. Um, but even absent all that, he was on bond when this occurred. He left uh, Alabama while he was under bond, which is a violation of his bond condition from Montgomery. He um, this is not the first time. There, I've got a letter that was in a, a file on a couple of 2015 cases that he had pending where he had a bonding company asked to get off the bond then 
because while he was under bond in other cases, he fled to Florida, got new charges, attempting to elude some drug charges down there. So he has a history of while he's on bond, leaving Alabama and specifically going to Florida. Um, you know, those are the big things. And also his allegation that he's being threatened. His mother wrote the judge a letter in some 2012 cases making the same allegation, wanting him moved because he's being threatened in jail. This seems to be a common tactic with him. To, to allege threats to get what he wants. It's seen him a common tactic to while he's on bond to go to Florida and commit additional crimes. And for that reason, the fact that he was under bond when this occurred, he was under bond and left the state, which is a violation of the bond. Uh, and again, it's our stance he wants to get back to Montgomery um, because he has some affiliations there. He's more comfortable there. And I think the crime has occurred here and needs to be held here. Anything else, Mr. Beaver? Judge, as to the last part of that, he <coughs> Pending charges in Montgomery that need to be dealt with as well. Uh, we haven't, the bonds, haven't the bonds in those cases been revoked? Uh, as, as far as I know, yes, sir. So the, the some but, substance and import of your motion is just to have them transferred to uh, Montgomery, is it not? To some extent. Assuming he made the bond here. However, there's a possibility the judge in Montgomery could grant him a bond as well. Um, and transporting him there while the no bond here does does no good in that instance. <laughs> All right, the court's considered your motion, your written motion, and your res and the response there too, and your arguments here today, and the court denies your motion to set bond. Next motion. Yes, sir, Judge. The next uh, next motion was uh, regarding the gag order. Uh, the defense does not oppose the gag order. Um, we, we think there's valid reason for it. Um, we want Mr. Yazid to have a fair trial. We want Mr. Yazid to have jurors that have not been prejudiced by media exposure. Um, unfortunately, in this case, witnesses for the state uh, have already violated that order. In fact, while I was in the process of typing my motion, they were on Dr. Phil, speaking to a nationwide audience, uh, potentially tainting every juror across the state of Alabama. Um, and while this case will probably be a year or so before it gets to trial. Um, certainly, I think folks are going to remember stuff like that. Um, we would really just ask for the court to enforce its order. Um, and and if the court is disinclined to do that, then uh, grant Mr. Z equal access to the media. State's response. In this day and age of the internet and just folks are reporting on it whether or not we say anything whether or not the family says anything the media is reporting on it people are reading it across the state across the country i think we know that um, the family is trying to find their daughter that's their interest um, i understand and greatly respect your gag order um, and I've, I've had conversations with them about talking but at the same time they're grieving parents they're trying to find their little girl and i think to keep them from asking for help obviously that's in the court's purview um, Again, to assail them because they're out violating your gag order. They're trying to find their little girl. And uh, I know you've got a hearing coming up on December 4th to address the issue. Um, so I'll just leave, leave all that argument for them, with the exception to say, you know, we certainly believe, as you believe too, Judge, I think, with the media here, they are allowed to be in here and see this. And, you know, we're not interested in prosecuting anybody in the dark. And um, so, you know, allowing access and all, that's, that's, that's my stance. As long as the gag order is in effect, the court uh, expects it to be followed uh, for you to maintain through your victim's assistance officer in your office uh, some level of control over the things that are said. I will take the matter under advisement and probably address it all on December 4th. And that's the day of the hearing on the motion to intervene and lift the gag order filed by non-parties to this case. Anything else? Uh, we have the state's motion about DNA. I was going to say, I think you've addressed all of our motions. And yes, sir. The state filed a motion yesterday uh, to compel Mr. Yazid to uh, submit a collection of uh, a buckle swab <coughs> so that the, the state is able to have a uh, known um, a DNA standard of the uh, And... Uh, in support of that motion, uh, while the, the motion that the state filed was fairly general in nature, uh, we would 
point out additionally that there was <coughs> uh, DNA of a male profile found in the car. And so the defendant's uh, DNA profile is needed uh, for comparison with, with that sample and any uh, future uh, evidence that's collected. Defense have any response to that motion? Judge, just generally, um, I, I know that this has been ruled on by cases in the past, uh, but we would certainly assert that uh, such a swab would be an unlawful search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. Um, but more specifically, uh, Alabama Code Section 36-18-25, um, subsection C, uh, allows for collection of, of these types of samples at the time of booking. Uh, we are well beyond the time of booking. Um, and, and without a search warrant, uh, we would argue that this is improper procedure. In response to that, Mr. Saucer. Your Honor, uh, <coughs> with regard, uh, I'll start at the back uh, <coughs> first. With regard to a search warrant, we came here today for a preliminary hearing. The defendant filed a motion for bond. The state's taken nothing for granted in this case. It, it's possible that the defendant could have been released on bond today, tomorrow, or in the days to come. Uh, that's why the state went, uh, used the vehicle of uh, seeking a court order for this and not a search warrant uh, because it would ensure that we were able to get, uh, get uh, the sample and do the collection before the defendant's released uh, and possibly evades uh, <coughs> the opportunity for us to collect a sample uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, hardly invasive procedure that just involves uh, swabbing of the defendants uh, the inside of his mouth uh, officers are trained in how to do it it's occurred in other cases uh, in this courthouse uh, we would submit that uh, Although it can be done at the time of booking, uh, like we said, everybody's anticipating getting to the point of trial in this case, and, and both sides are entitled to a fair trial. And that's why we want to make sure that the chain of custody in something like this is airtight and we're, we're prepared to go forward with collection. Does the court's ruling on the uh, motion about bond in any way affect your the state's position on getting a search warrant or not? No, sir, but I, I no, sir, but I, I would submit that the court has heard uh, much of the same evidence that it would hear in an affidavit in support of the search warrant, uh, and I'm, I've made representations as an officer of the court, and I would just ask them that the order uh, be imposed uh, or the order be um, issued uh, in light of that. Well, if the court agrees with that position, then the court will order that the defendant submit to the buccal swab uh, for DNA pur testing purposes. Any other motions? No, sir. Anything else from the defendant? No, at this time, no. All right. All right, that concludes this case. The court will take a five-minute break, and then we'll start with the remainder of our preliminary hearing document.